Hey everyone, welcome to Automatic Reviews. I am Mark, and today we're going to be unboxing the wonderful and amazing Grand Seiko SBGR317. It is a wonderful and very fascinating watch, and we're going to be having a look at it in just a second. Um, before we get to that, I want to let you guys know this is not the first unboxing of this watch. I have had it out, I have sized the bracelet already, and all that kind of thing. I just kind of want to give you guys an, ex you know, sort of a feeling for what it's like to, um, you know, unbox one of these watches, see some of the extras that came with it, and I'll give you a, f a few of my first kind of initial impressions of the watch. Uh, I will be posting a macro tour in the coming days, and I'm going to be trying to put up a review uh, sooner rather than later, um, because I think I'm I'm starting to get ready to you know share with you my thoughts about this watch. And here's a little bit of a spoiler: it's an amazing watch. So uh, okay, let's get right to it. All right, before we get to the unboxing, just a quick wrist check. It is the Strela Chronograph. I put on it for the summer. This nylon strap it kind of has a NATO look. It's actually quite thick, and it you know has a standard sort of buckle and a quick release. Uh, it is by Christopher Ward. It is quite a high quality strap. If I had a criticism of it is that it's, it is on the thick side, so it doesn't you know, conform to the wrist as uh, seamlessly as, as do some um, nylon straps, but I will say it feels very high quality, and I do think it looks really cool with this watch. I'm really enjoying that combination, so that is a very cool thing, I think. Uh, moving on to the, the Grand Seiko stuff. Uh, this is not the watch. It's far too small a box. This is some sort of what they say, swag that came with the watch as well as this which is a um a case a travel case it's nice quality and uh it's hard hard sided and it has a good quality zipper and it uh i think it's a nice little piece of you know swag as they say extra uh, that came along with it um i'm very happy for that to have that uh, this one is uh very cool. It is apparently in quite limited supply. Uh, the store where I got it from um, said that they only had received one of these. And so I feel pretty lucky to have it. Um, it is the paperweight. And I haven't actually taken it out of the plastic yet. So uh, that's an actual legitimate first unboxing here. It is made uh, by Owachu, a famous ironworks in Japan. And it is really nice. And if you're a fan of Grand Seiko or just watches and like watch swag type of things, this is a very cool piece of watch swag. So I'm going to try to stop saying swag, guys. But what can I do? This is what this is. And it is really nice. And I'm very, I feel very lucky to have uh, received this piece of uh, particular uh uh, what am I going to call this if it's not swag? Uh, merchandise? Extras? It's a it's a perk? It's a perk. And uh, it's a nice one. So, and let's get on to the actual unboxing of the watch. It comes in this uh, blue sort of, you know, standard kind of vinyl uh, outer shell box. And you lift this off and inside is the rice paper that everyone's come, you know, become familiar with, with the Grand Seikos. And you use this rice paper, I've seen some people confused about this, you use this rice paper to actually lift out the inner box. That's what it's there for. And that's very cool. It has this little piece of uh, protective um, vinyl cloth of some kind, or uh, I don't know, plasticky sort of polyester cloth. I think just serves a, a you know shipping purpose of some kind. Uh, here is the um, inside. Here is the uh, information about the watch movement, the specifics. I think this is a really nice um, folding, you know, uh, document holder. I think it's pretty classy and it's a nice touch. Um, here's the warranty uh, information. All my my personal information is filled out inside there, um, and also of course the manual. And it has, you know, different languages and uh, all the rest of that stuff. And uh, it's pretty comprehensive and it's nicely printed. But, I mean, these are standard, uh, you know, things that you're going to get with a, a new watch. So let's put this paper aside and get to the actual unboxing of the watch. And it is contained inside here. And there it is. Uh, I will take it out and show to you guys the uh, a few comments on the box itself. I think what I'm going to do is remove the watch and place it aside so I can just talk a little bit about the actual box itself. Um, it's pretty good quality. I've heard some complaints about Grand Seiko boxes. If you look at the, the finer points of the outside of the box, I think it's pretty nicely made. I mean, it's not the kind of box you'd get on a, on a watch like a, a Tissot or a Hamilton or, or something on the lower end of the Swiss market. 
I don't think it's as nice as the boxes that you get on the higher end of the Swiss market. Um, I feel like it's, it's nice. It's a it, it box made in Japan. They sort of go out of their way to put that there, I think. It's sort of like a lot of boxes are, you know, made in China or something like that. Nothing against uh, things that are produced in China. A lot of great stuff is made in China, but I think they want to have you know that from the beginning to the end, this watch is made entirely in Japan. And I think that's, uh, that includes the box. So uh, yeah, the inside of the box, it has the emblem uh, printed on the top here. And it, you know, has these sort of uh, barrier, you know, these things that hold the watch cushion in place. They are made of some kind of either reinforced cardboard or plastic of some kind that's been covered with a, uh, some kind of a satin cloth. I don't think they are on the most durable end of the spectrum. I actually, um, this is my second box. I will uh, disclose that. When I got home, my first box, I noticed that the this one had the sort of a crease in it and it, it bothered me. So I, I did request um, that they mail me uh, an exchange box uh, and uh, they, they happily did so. So that's what this is. This is the second box. So I do know that these can be damaged and I, I just think these ought to be made of a solid block of foam or or something just more durable than they are. I don't think under regular use they would become damaged. I suspect that um, the one on the box I previously had was damaged when somebody was removing the watch to put that on display. They probably, out of a, an abundance of caution, pushed aside this so they could gently remove the watch because they didn't want to scrape the watch against the side or, you know, be rough on the watch itself. But as a result, what they did is they creased this portion. Um, and I think that, that could easily happen. And I think that's an unfortunate that that could happen with the box, uh, you know, on a watch of this caliber. You kind of want the box to... I mean, I'm not one of those people who thinks the box has to be something glorious and spectacular. I think it's cool when they are. But I don't think that it's necessary for your enjoyment of the watch. Most of us open it, take the watch out, and then we keep, like, the spare links in here or something. And maybe once in a blue moon, um, we, we look at the box or, or you know, whatever. Uh, but I do think a watch of this caliber is the kind of watch that gets passed down through the generations. And as a result of that, I think it would be nice if the box kind of reflected that longevity and, and sort of had that, um, I don't know, just uh, that, that sense of... Um, magnificence that the watch does you know i don't think that's a, a waste of money uh, when they put a little extra effort into the box so but i do think it's certainly uh, passable it's nicer than your average watch box and it certainly does the job of protecting the watch so let's get on to the watch itself it is presented on this uh you know satin cushion uh, which does its job and yeah wow i mean guys this is wow it's a uh, I'm going to put on gloves so I can handle this watch without, you know, putting fingerprints on it. So just, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so gloves on. That way I can handle it without adding uh, some extra fingerprints. Uh, the watch itself is uh, stunningly made. As you can see, it um, it's sort of a fingerprint magnet, as you can expect with anything with all these polished surfaces, uh, including the, the crystal itself. But it, the thing about a Grand Seiko is that it is impossible to do justice to this watch in a video or in photos. There's, there's so many polished surfaces, there's so much going on with light refraction that I feel like any photo or video just fails to capture what it actually looks like in person, which is just absolutely stunning. It's super, super well made. I think, you know, Grand Seikos have a, a reputation for having bracelets that are sort of uh, less than their Swiss counterparts. And I think that is true for some aspects of the bracelet. I think that it, the, the, its lack of a um, micro adjust is frustrating to a point, but I think some of the issues with the bracelets have been a little overblown, including the ability to um, size it correctly. You can absolutely size it correctly because of the way the um, micro, uh, sorry, because of the way the half links uh, operate in this watch. And I'll go into more detail about that in a future video. But if you have any questions about it, um, we can talk about it in the comments a bit. Essentially, what it really is about is the half links are longer than a half a link. So you can, sometimes it feels like, wow, I'm stuck between a full link and a half link on one side. If I take one half link off, it's too small. If I put the half link on, it's too big. Uh, bottom line is sometimes that means you actually have to take both half links off and put one full link on, and that's when the watch will fit perfectly. Um, that's the basic secret. I'll go into greater depth with that uh, on another video. Uh, but yeah, just my overall impressions of it, it's gorgeous. I'm gonna uh, sort of do the wrist shot thing. Um, yeah, so here, here it is on the wrist. Uh, you know what? I originally was going to go for the SBGR309. I wasn't happy with the unit they had in the store, and I was prepared to leave, and then I tried on this one, the SBGR317. Uh, 
it is 40 millimeters across as opposed to 42. Uh, I do tend to favor larger watches, but I've been getting more and more into watches that are a little bit smaller. I'm getting used to them. And I actually think for this particular style of watch, it does look really good at this size. And it's comfortable and it's, a, it's just a beautiful watch. I'm, I'm glad I chose this particular one. It keeps really good time so far. We're talking about around three seconds fast per day with sort of keeping it pretty charged, you know, at the, at the height of its um, power reserve. So I do think that, uh, you know, it's definitely um, a very accurate watch. Um, it's very, very legible. Uh, I'm going to save some of this stuff for the review, but I will tell you some people, were, you know, are kind of concerned about these Seiko saying, well, they are kind of a sort of sport dress, gata, go anywhere, do anything watch. But what about the loom? There's no loom. Um, because of the way that the, 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 you know, the combination of brushing and polishing on the uh, indices as well as the hands, I would say there is absolutely no concern about that. I feel like this watch is more legible in low light um, than most of the watches that I own that do have loom. And that's just simply because most of the time the loom isn't charged when you need it to be. Um, so you can't charge this watch up before going into like a dark movie theater, for example. So that would be a drawback in that circumstance, perhaps. But I do think you could actually read this watch pretty well in a, in a movie theater because it catches any little bit of light that's there these facets all just work together to, you know, really clearly illustrate what time it is. It's very, very easy to read, remarkable, probably the easiest to read watch that I own. So I would put those fears aside if you had them. I, I'm almost launching into a, a review here, guys. That's not what I want to do. I will take it off just quickly and I will show you the uh, back. It is um, an automatic, as you can read on the front here, um, my favorite kind of watch. And there's the movement, the 9S65. It has a 72 hour power reserve and it is gorgeously decorated. It is just a beautiful, super, super well-made watch. And I cannot wait to show you guys more. I'm gonna be posting, as I um, may have mentioned already, I'm gonna be posting the macro tour, which gives you some close-up views of the watch. I did have some issues with the light refraction and the dust, uh, as I do film somewhere that's you know kind of dusty. And uh, watches, especially when you polish them up, they get staticky and um, they become dust magnets and it amplifies the problem. But I have tried to put together a macro uh, uh, tour video for you guys to get a good idea of what this watch actually looks like. And as well, I, um, I'm gonna be posting a review fairly soon. I have, um, you know, I have my thoughts are, are starting to uh, sort of coalesce and I'm starting to, to figure out what my overall opinion of the watch is. I'll give you a little spoiler. It is, uh, yeah, this is a tremendous watch. Uh, not a perfect watch, but uh, a glorious, wonderful watch. <laughs> so, uh, I, yep, <laughs> that, that will be it for now. Okay, so that was it. The unboxing of the amazing Grand Seiko SBGR317. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, I hope you uh, subscribe, stick around. Uh, you know, there's going to be more content about this watch and about other really cool watches. And if you're into watches, you know, uh, it's, uh, this, is a, this might be a channel for you. And uh, beyond that, please do comment. I do love to have interactions with you guys. I love to, you know, share ideas, talk about watches. And, uh, you know, hear your impressions uh, about uh, what I've said and uh, just about your thoughts about these really, really cool pieces and, uh, you know, watches you may be interested in. It doesn't have to be about the watch that I talked about in the video. It can be about any watch because I love talking about watches. So if you feel like just saying, hey, I got this brand new watch, it's really cool. It doesn't have to be the watch I just talked about. It can just be about the watch you're wearing or that you want to buy or, you know, anything. Start a conversation because I love talking to you guys. And on that note, I will leave you guys with well wishes. I hope you are all safe and sound and that uh, things are going as well as possible for you uh, during these times. And uh, I do hope to see you again. Thank you. Bye.